I bow to all the seekers of truth. <coughs> Yesterday you have been explained about the subtle being within us, the subtle instruments within us described in the Bible of Tree of Life, working out this last breakthrough of Self-Realization. And this happening is a living happening, a spontaneous happening, the way a seed sprouts spontaneously when it is embedded in the Mother Earth. The problem with the human mind is such that he thinks or it thinks that it can work out its own realization, its own emancipation. We do not understand this simple thing that at a human level we do not do anything that is living. We cannot germinate a seed, leave alone that. We cannot even create anything that is dead. We can just transform one dead into another form. But we cannot understand that whatever we may try, we cannot lay our hands on the living process. Only after Self-Realization you are entitled, you get powers to do living work. That is the sign of a person who is born again, who is a yogi, who has had a union with the Divine. It is not those who proclaim or announce or advertise that we are something special, selected people, that we have the powers or that we can take you to Divine, one can really produce results. Results can only be produced of living process when you have the power of your Spirit. We have heard about Christ who cured people and He cured at that time, in such a short time as it was, hardly about twenty-one people and He was crucified. We could not bear the truth that He was the Son of God. Now maybe one may create big huge organizations in His name, make big money in His name and do uh, all kinds of things. But when He was there, He was present, they denied Him. So as we see within ourselves there is this power which has to manifest. We should be very anxious to get our Self-Realization. If I say there is a diamond available here, just free, is your own. People would come not only from San Diego but also from Australia, India, Japan and all over the world, rushing for it. 
But when I say there is this diamond within you, in your heart, still we are identified with so many falsehoods that we do not want that diamond to shine in our attention is a surprise. But I'm not surprised because we are still ignorant about it. We do not know how beautifully we are made, how in our evolutionary process we are built in so beautifully the whole information about the truth. Only this machinery has to work out. Only this has to get connected with the Divine. If we really logically, intelligently understand that the living process has to work spontaneously and you can't do anything about it, you can understand how Sahaja Yoga works. It's all there. One does not have to do anything. It's all there. Like a little seed, a minutest one maybe, has all the maps of all the trees it is going to produce. In the same way, within you lies this potential which is to be manifested. We have been also told about the left and right side within us. Left and right side are the only two sides in which our attention can move, which represents our sympathetic nervous system. That is, when you went, go into any emergency, suppose you are rushing somewhere or running, your sympathetic goes into action and creates the results necessary for that action. For example, you have to run. So the sympathetic will start pumping the blood fast, will start breathing fast. But what brings it back to normal is the central path, what we call, represented in the medical terminology as parasympathetic. So, in our own effort, we can only go to the left or right. But when we try to go too much to the left and right, we create problems which we cannot explain and we cannot understand. The first and foremost problem we create is the physical problem. Today there are so many diseases we cannot understand how these diseases came into being and what is the nature of its creation or how are we going to get rid of this. Everybody is afraid of that unknown disease and these unknown diseases can crawl up to anyone, whatever you may say, unless and until you become the spirit. How they are caused is a very simple thing to understand. The physical problems come to us because of our imbalances. In various ways we try to go to the left or to the right. Now let us see how cancer is caused because that is the headache of today or maybe of yesterday. Today's headache is something else. Cancer is caused only because we do not keep to our temperate life. If I say that this is the center that is formed by the left and the right side, then this center is providing the necessary vital energy to the left and right side equal. But supposing <coughs> you are a very futuristic person, you are planning too much, thinking too much, then what do you do? You use your right side too much. As a result, this 
moves this way <coughs> also the center now constricts there is no space in between left in the center for the vital energy to flow at this juncture when you have moved too much from the left side if any emotional disturbance comes in or if you go to somebody who is practicing black magic and all kinds of left sided negative things or else you might meet, meet with an accident or a shock this breaks and when this center breaks you lose your connection with the center the controlling agency that is the central nervous system does not play any more part and what happens to you that the growth of the cells become malignant means they grow on their own there is no relationship to the growth of other cells for example suddenly you will find such a person will have a nose increasing in size or will find an ear increasing in size overpowering all others or we can say that it becomes a very dominating cell this is a simple thing that happens in cancer luckily we have now in delhi university the understanding of sir yoga very well because we have cured many people of very somehow they were very highly placed in life of cancer and other diseases so they have accepted it for a doctorate and two doctors have got now their md in two subjects one was a psychosomatic disease one of the psychosomatic disease is cancer there are so many others and another one who has got his doctorate is in the physical fitness and vulnerability to diseases now there are seven other doctors in london who are doing research on it and it's remarkable how after realization you get out of the clutches of physical sickness so what happens when the kundalini rises what she does she pierces through this constricted chakras repairs it and brings it back to its normal position repairs it and i have seen a uh, our president of india getting cured of his cancer in 10 minutes time that to on the aeroplane through sir but it is easy to deal with an india because they know what is a kundalini and they know what is a saint they will not easily take to these fake persons though you are great seekers of a very high quality that understanding is there in india more because they know more about the roots and not about the tree as you know more about the tree but it's such a barrier in understanding that 300 years english ruled in india they could not learn a word today it's amazing this is such a difficult sanskrit verses about the primordial mother written by adi shankara acharya in the 6th century which many indians will find it difficult to say is so beautifully sung the whole mantras as they say are beautifully rendered that even a well equipped brahmin cannot do by people who are not from india they don't even know sanskrit language how this has happened is the manifestation of the spirit the manifestation of the spirit gives you 
a dynamic personality. This dynamism comes to you. You can sing whatever you like, you can draw whatever you like, you can paint whatever you like. There are so many people who have become great orators and musicians, especially in India, because my work mostly has been in India. Of course, not that I am not concerned about the West. I have been, as I told you many a times in America. But to understand the reality, the first thing we must know that money has nothing to do with the living process. In America, you would be surprised there has been a business offered to me that the cool breeze that I blow, if I can bottle it up, they can sell it. <laughs> Everything goes into a business proposition. And that's why it is so difficult. For example, you have seen here, of course, I must say you are great people that you have come to a program which has nothing to do with money. It's something really remarkable, I must say. But today, if I was talking in India or if I was visiting even a small village, there would have been minimum 10,000 people. Minimum and they would get all their realization. The seeking is in the West. They are honest seekers. But what to seek is the knowledge which is in the East. It's something like somebody have the teeth but no food and those have food have no teeth on one side, but on the other side they have teeth but no food. It is such a simple thing to get cured. Of your physical problems is the easiest. Then the second comes is the problem, as they say, is of stress. It's a common disease in the West of the stress. What is the source of stress within us? The source of stress is very simple. That when we think, I mean these days the amount of thinking we do. First of all, when I came to America, I was very confused because of the choices you had. You walk into any bathroom, you better ask the owner, how do you operate? Otherwise, suddenly you'll find you have fallen into a big swimming pool, suddenly it opens out for you. Or maybe you open some sort of a shower and it becomes a torrential rain upon you. So many choices which maddens completely. What is there to choose? about how you will have your scissors. As long as the scissor works, it should be all right. It is so complicated because so much of machinery, they have to produce so many things, so many varieties. Right from A to Z, whether it is a dress, whether it is a hairdo, whether it is a carpet or with an ordinary thing which we call as the handle of the car. Before getting into the car, better ask the driver how it operates, otherwise you'll be locked. There is no uniformity kept about these useless material things. And so the choices are so many. You go to the shop, you go mad. You don't know what to buy. You just ask them, I just needed some say powder for my body. Now which one you want? This one, this one, they'll give you 32 things 
you start wondering, oh God, I have only one body and 32 things, what to do? It is so difficult to locate something that you need because you really don't know. This is natural number one, this is absurd number two, like that goes on and on and on the list for a small nonsensical thing like that. Then tomorrow you go in the market, you find that's gone out of market. Now another 32 things have come back. All such maddening things put you to thinking, what should I do? Then we have to plan out everything in the future. It is so much so that by temperament people have become futuristic. Like they are sitting here listening to me, but they are thinking now how will I go home and what food I will be eating, then what music I will have. They are sitting here at present, but thinking about something that is going to happen. Then too much planning they will do. They do not know the plan of the divine. They will plan it out, rush, go forward, do this, go to the airport. What has happened? The plane is delayed three hours. Why? Because their congestion, holiday cancelled. They had planned the holiday a year ahold, ahead. Poor things, you see, packed everything <laughs> to go somewhere. Holiday has to be cancelled because the planes are not moving. So they sit down on the airport three days waiting for something to happen. Nothing happens, they go home. But a yogi does not plan. He knows what's going to happen. He does not bother. But supposing a yogi gets lost on the way, then he thinks, all right, if I am lost, there must be something here, I must see. I am there with myself, I am not lost. So let us enjoy. After all, what are we going to miss? It is something one has to see that as we are so much stressed and under the domination of this watch, that we all the time rush, rush, rush. Even the jobs that we do, we are supposed to rush. You may rush as much as you like, but the problem is your mind also rushes with it and the whole personality gets involved in it. But if you have seen a wheel, the whole wheel moves, but the axis has to be steady. If the axis also starts moving, there is stress. That is exactly what happens to us, that we start moving with all the tensions that are so called, I call them. Now, there is a center within us which we call as Vadishtana center. Is the second center which as you see is working out the void. We call this as the void, not the Zen Kai void, but this is the void. And this area is worked out by this Vadishtana <coughs> which looks after the liver, the pancreas, the spleen, the kidneys and part of the intestines physically or in the medical terminology we can say the aortic plexus manifested by this center works. Now when the center is doing this work in balance is all right, but when we think too much then the same center has to convert the fat for the use of the brain to make it into gray cells. But when we think too much, then it neglects other important work which it has to do. So you get a liver trouble. I find 
at least 50 percent people in the west are suffering from liver trouble they are not aware of it till they get to cirrhosis to skin troubles is that they will not know that they have a bad liver till they have jaundice or uh, other diseases which are caused by liver problems then we have people who have lethargic livers also so we have two types of people who have lethargic organs or overactive organs so this swadishthan chakra cannot look after its duty in a balanced way creates a kind of an imbalance so we you neglect your pancreas you get diabetes is a funny idea that is not prevalent that we should not take sugar because i don't know from where it has come because they think it causes you diabetes it does not in india in a village if you go they have to put so much sugar in the tea that the spoon must stand at right angles otherwise they won't take and nobody has diabetes they have never heard about it. never known what is diabetes what is that they'll say the reason is they don't think they live for the moment all right today is the work let's go do this farming and come home and sleep off they don't think too much we think about everything plan out everything whatever is spontaneous also we think about then the third thing that happens to you is the trouble of the spleen now spleen is our time keeper it gives us a rhythm as you have seen the rhythm today the same way it's the rhythm of the life is kept by the spleen when you go into an emergency then the same spleen starts producing more red blood corpuscles for your use now today's life as it is is all the time shocking early in the morning you read your newspaper i think this is one of the worst habits because as soon as you see the newspaper the first shock in the morning is oh god so many dead plane was crushed war has started somebody fell from somewhere all horrible things in the newspaper because newspapers don't believe in giving something good news if there will be peace and happiness what will they publish i don't know so they want to give shocking news so there's some sensation in the body it has happened to such an extension extent that now unless and until the music is sensational unless and until we get a shock all the time we do not react of course the joy part is missing no doubt about it. so this poor spleen doesn't understand this personality which is all the time under shock then you get into your car and on the road there is a jam finished you had to reach at such and such time and there's a jam so now you are cursing everything sitting down there worried suddenly you find an accident then you go in the office or some place where you are working the boss has had a quarrel with his wife so he comes and shouts at you another shock all the time you are facing very arrogant horrible people i mean i myself was afraid to go to shops or anything because suddenly they jump on you like a horse or sometimes like a dog god knows how they will react on you you get a fright what's the matter with them why are they so shocking but all of them are under stress 
uh, they're taking it out on you. But the worst thing that happens with this spleen going crazy, that you get blood cancer. Blood cancer is caused by hectic life and for speedy life that we need. Now the blood pressure comes from the kidney and like that so many things are caused by one simple thing that we think too much. What is there to think? I just don't understand. Whatever has to happen will happen. By thinking nothing is going to stop. By thinking we have achieved nothing. If you read Einstein, Einstein who has developed the theory of relativity, at the very outset he says that I was tired and I was lying down in my garden playing with soap bubbles and suddenly from somewhere unknown the theory of relativity dawned upon me. Whatever we have is there. Whatever we have to find out comes from the unknown. But thinking about it like mad just ruins us. But if I say don't think you cannot stop it. I know that because we had a wonderful doctor in Switzerland. He came and he said, Mother, do what you like. You cut my throat, you cut my head, but stop this thinking. I am going mad with you. So you develop a momentum of thinking. You all the time thinking, 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 thinking. Now what happens with the Kundalini? When the Kundalini rises, passes through your Agya Chakra, you go beyond thought. It is like one wave of thought comes up and goes down, another wave of thought comes up and goes down. In the center there is a little space. So one comes from the past and goes to the future or the future to the past. In between there is a little space and that is the present. So when the Kundalini rises, passes through this Agya Chakra, the one that gives you thought is the ego on the super ego on both the sides as you can see clearly, they are sucked in. Your karmas are sucked in. Your ego is sucked in. Your conditioning is sucked in. And you stand at the present moment. Then if you want to think, if you don't want to think, you just sit down in complete silence enjoying yourself. You become in command. Like you are standing in the water, you are afraid of getting drowned. But if you get into the boat, you enjoy the water. But supposing you become a master swimmer, then you can save others also from the water. This is exactly what happens when a Sahaja Yogi establishes himself well that he can give salvation to so many and can save so many people. This is how we are going to emancipate. Now the emotional side that we have is also another extreme to which we move. And with the help of certain elements, you will be surprised one candle can at least cure 25 mad people. At least. It is very simple. If you enlighten this light, Then what happens? That enlightened light goes inside your left side and enlightens it completely and all the negativity disappears into your collective subconscious. And you no more suffer from the left side of insanity, epilepsy, schizophrenia, all this nonsense. Because you stand in the center, you are neither on the left nor on the right, but you are in the center, you get rid of your emotional problems. Now there are spiritual problems also. Before, as we have, I told you, thinking problem, we have also physical problems like over exertion. Now people are jogging, it is madness. 
I really tell you, first I thought there's some sort of an earthquake that the old, young, everybody running, what is happening? What's wrong? Where are you running? Because you are overexerting yourself. What is the need to overexert yourself? Because now a concept is that if you are muscular, I don't know, whatever is the concept, every day changing, every day you find new, new things, then you become over efficient. You become dynamic. It's absurd. We have seen in history, say, we have got uh, the greatest statesman and the person who saved us from this horrible Hitler was Churchill. And what a fat man he was. He never did jogging in his lifetime. I mean, you must accept your body, it requires. So for example, if I start jogging, I'll be nowhere. Myself, because I need lot of water to protect these chakras, which work out, the emancipation. To me, that is much more important than becoming some sort of a cinema actress. There are many cinema actresses, so what? What have they achieved? How many people have they emancipated? So what is your ideal in life is to be decided first. Do you want to be all the time slave of your body? And uh, I don't know what you get. I mean, these days nobody looks at no one. They are fed up now. And you can't make out one from another because they go to the same hairdresser, one fashion starts. I have to think, is this the same person or somebody else? I mean, it is better to grow your beard to look something different. I mean, there's no way of making out who is who. Everybody has the same hairdress, everybody has the same funny dress, everybody looking the same. They have no personality. Tomorrow a wave comes that you should put a plastic bag on your head. Everybody will be moving with a plastic bag. We have to have a personality. Why should we dress up as everybody is dressing up? Such a pressure. I know that because I have another life which you know very well, which is supposed to be the high society, so called. And the stupidest thing we discuss in that society, like they laugh at a woman if she's wearing something that was, say, belonging to sixties. I mean, what's the harm? No, that's not modern. But what do you gain by becoming so modern, running with the fashion? What do you gain? Now the fashion in England is to have holy pants, to make holes. Imagine that cold, horrible cold that you have. What is the need to make holes in your pants to get all kinds of troubles, and then they'll have arthritis, they'll have this. First they had tight pants, so they developed varicose veins. So now they are having such loose pants that they will develop arthritis. These people are managing you. These manufacturers are befooling you. This we cannot see because we have lost our personality. So, we develop so many problems also because we play into the hands of nonsenses. Now say, Indian people have lived for so many ages now, so they have learnt all the lessons. If you go and tell them that you wear a holy pant, they'll say you get lost. Sorry sir, we know him. Now they are painting their hair. And when they are painting their hair, People said, why are you painting their hair? Oh, that's the fashion, what's, what's wrong? But people become blind with that. We had three patients who became blind because they painted their hair and some sort of a thing, punk, punk. There were three blind punks who came to surgery. Actually, you have to punch them to talk to them. 
this is the society in which we live. Anybody who is sane will think I am mad. Like going to a lunatic asylum, you start thinking, am I mad or they are mad? That's how it creates a stress on us. Let us live with our own dignity. You can see Mahatma Gandhi went for his round table conference. He wore his dhoti. He didn't wear three piece suit and a tail coat. That's another nonsense. Everybody in England has to wear a tail coat when they go to the Queen's party. But they can't afford, so they borrow. Some are tight, some are loose. And when you see them there, I mean, I've been to many of them, you can't recognize. And they look so absurd and clownish. But poor things, you know, <laughs> all these big, big ambassadors have to go about with that. Because it is supposed to be a formal dress. I mean, what a formal dress it is. All these things pressurize you. They make you feel, oh, you must wear a dress like this. Even when you go to some guru, he says, all right, you all have to wear, say, orange dress. So you are forced into it. You have to wear the orange dress. From where are you going to manage getting rid of all this nonsense? of forcing you to do this and forcing you to do that. But here you are so individualistic and here you are without a personality. It is not that anybody says you have to do it, but you just do it because we have no personality. Individualism means personality. And that is what, when it is lost, you feel also your guilt and your stress. That's possible that you stand on in your own glory, in your own personality, in your own understanding of your spiritual wealth. So when that starts, another style of movement comes in like hippies. You become like a primitive person, You become like a hippie, you go about like a hippie, you wear a funny dress, become a primitive personality and think, oh, 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 I have done very great thing. I had some hippies with me, I told you yesterday. So I asked them, why do you dress up like this? They said, we want this kind of culture. I said, this is primitive. I said, we want to be primitive. I said, you cannot be. Your brain is modern. Just by wearing these primitive things, you cannot be primitive. Accept it. Accept your personality. And now, we, you have your realization and it will work out. So, with all these stresses on us, thinking too much, futuristic personality, you develop the stress. Now what happens? When Kundalini rises, you are beyond thought. That's called in Sanskrit as nirvichar samadhi, into thoughtless awareness. You are fully aware. On the contrary, you are more aware, but you are in thoughtless awareness. Now, when I see this carpet in thoughtless awareness, I don't think. I don't think because if I have to think, oh, Baba, this is my carpet. Now I have not insured it. If somebody will run away with it, then what will happen? I won't be able to give a speech or anything. I'll be worried about the carpet only. But when I look at this carpet, I don't think. Only the joy of the creation of this carpet is just pouring into me. 
a beautiful blissful feeling that's all i'm not thinking like a very still beautiful lake which has no ripples reflects all the beauty that is around it fully the complete joy is reflected in a mind which is absolutely still not reacting not accepting just seeing witnessing and this witness state comes into you and you become a tranquil and a peaceful person such peace that such a person wherever he goes wherever he walks a peaceful atmosphere prevails the nature the elements all react to such a person just talking about peace or giving prizes of peace we do not create peace i know of people who have got noble prizes of peace are horrid ma they look like some mad dogs if you have to talk to them take a barge pole in between don't know when you will be hit with the prize they have got and you may have to pay very dearly for meeting such a personality who is supposed to be the foundation of peace and you find it's a fountain of violence this is the situation today that we are placed in a society which artificially expresses itself there's nothing genuine nothing innate is so artificial that if somebody standing talking of god this that tomorrow you find he is a man going about with a prostitute can you imagine the big big organization in england you will be surprised that the soho which is the residence of prostitutes is owned by the church of england how do you explain that and the vatican the less said the better and the indian temples you better not go there at all because it will, you will end up with some sort of a position within you you'll all get possessed it's horrid the way they are managing black magic in those temples so all these man made religions have completely covered the beauty of reality and when you see that you start doubting god god exists is there but do not deceive yourself do not be deluded be honest and ask for the right thing ask for the real and then you will find it that it exists now in the spiritual field also we get lost we have fake gurus of all kinds they try to do this trick tomorrow that trick day after tomorrow another trick they'll say now if you pay me 500 pounds today you will be able to levitate yourself and move about what is the need to do that you have got your seats to sit down why do you want to levitate and hang in the air as it is there is so much of jam on the streets and are you going to create more jams there this kind of a stupid stuff we accept with our closed minds what has happened to our thinking think of your forefathers when abraham lincoln lived in this country such a great personality do you think they would have accepted anything like this stupid we must have our ideals to see will abraham lincoln accept the stupid idea of levitation 
Will Gandhi ji accept such a nonsensical idea? Will Christ accept such a nonsensical idea? Then why should I? Once we realize that we are guided by these great people who came on this earth, lived with us, have given us wisdom to see for ourselves what are we doing. But these days, as I told you, I also move in the so-called high society. The greatest topic is, what guru are you going? I am going to the most expensive one. He charges now one thousand pounds more than the other. So the other says, all right, can I also come with you? Let me see my bank account. If I have money, I would like to go. It has become a craze. How can you sell God in the market? That's why Christ took a hunter and beat all such people who collect money in the name of God and who ask for money. Today that time has come that so many of them need good beatings. And if Christ was here, I'm sure he would have done it. All those people call themselves Christ, Christ, he would have shown them what it means to sell God in the market and to collect money in the name of God. And live on that money is the greatest sin that they are committing. That's why they don't like me, because I tell the truth, because they will suffer. If they do these things, they'll have to suffer in this lifetime and also in the lives to come. Whatever is holy, whatever is auspicious, has to be done with reverence and understanding that we don't do something that is so materialistic, so cheapish, so foolish, in the name of God. But there are so many who are selling the market, but it's not only plundering, it's not only cheating, it's not only thieving, but they spoil your central path, they spoil your chakras, they make you mad, they make you recluses, they take away all your money, I don't mind because you are stupid, so give away all your money, it doesn't matter. Money doesn't matter so much, but they take away all that is sense within you, all that is living within you. And that's how it's the most difficult thing to cure a person who suffers at the hands of these horrible sorcerers who have come in the name of God as false people. It's best that we understand the value of our life and get to our Self-realization and achieve that dynamism, that personality within us, which is our own, our right, for which the God Almighty in His compassion and love has brought Sahaja Yoga for is the spontaneous happening of Kundalini Awakening. May God bless you. I have to <coughs> now. Yesterday we had some questions, and uh, today. I think we can have one or two questions at the most. But then those who want to go can go away. But if you want to have your Self-realization, you have to know that I cannot force on you. I cannot also guarantee. If you are lucky enough, you will get your Realization. And I know most of you will get it. It takes hardly any time. But those who do not want to have it should leave us in peace and be civil to us. We'll be very kind of them. Now, first of all, yesterday I answered most of your questions. And if there is anyone, you can ask me if you think it is worth asking. But as I told you yesterday, if you are hungry, you better have your Realization. I've done the cooking. But if you have some question which is really lingering in your mind, I would not like you to 
miss the boat for that one little question, which <laughs> can be quite stupid also. But it's better I give you full chance to ask me a question if there is definitely a question in your mind which you think may stand up like a jack-in-the-box when your Kundalini is rising. I, I believe that most of the people here um, were here yesterday too, and there were two questions which were which were specific and were answered. Uh, perhaps Shrimataji, uh, we all are very uh, available. If people have questions after the program, let's have, if you so agree, Shrimataji, let's have the self-realization now. Now, first and foremost thing is we are not to count our mistakes here. You are not here for confessions. You are here for entering into the kingdom of God that is within you. So you have to prepare yourself and you should be very pleasantly placed towards yourself. You should not feel guilty at all. I must know that you are the epitome of evolution. And this is the last breakthrough that was promised long time back by many saints, many seers and many prophets. And you are going to get it. That breakthrough. So you have to be extremely happy with yourself and kind to yourself. I would say, as I love you, please try to love yourself. I would not have come to San Diego if I had not loved you at all. They asked me, Mother. You are so well off, you have everything. 
why do you travel at this age why do you take all the trouble i take this trouble because my love wants to express itself that's all so please try to love yourself i don't condemn in any way whatever you have done the past you forget you are now here in the present think that what you are going to be we have to do few things which are very simple you have to take out your shoes and put your feet on the mother earth we have to take help from the mother she is the kindest mother we can think of and then the kundalini who is your mother who is the reflection of the holy ghost of the primordial mother will be awakened because it's the energy of pure desire within so please put your left hand to express your desire to get your self realization and the right hand is to be used for releasing your chakras yourself by which you will yourself know later on how to open your centers by yourself like yesterday we'll have to just repeat what we did yesterday simple things that first you have to put your hand on your heart which is the abode of your scent of your spirit then you have to put it in the upper part of your abdomen on the left hand side and then you have to put it in the low part of your abdomen on the left hand side again you have to go back upper part of your abdomen on your heart then in the corner of your neck and your shoulder you have to put your right hand with your left hand like this and turn your head to your right this is the worst center we always have which we catch when we feel guilty the fashion these days i don't know who has manufactured it but it is a fashion to feel guilty so please turn your head to your right and remember that you are not to feel guilty at all now you have to put your hand on your forehead across and press it on both the sides this is the center of forgiveness you have to put your hand on the back side of your head and push back your head look up in the sky or i would say that you push back your head facing the sky then you stretch your hand stretch your hand with your fingers bent backwards put the center of your palm on top of your head in the fontanelle bone area which was a soft bone in your childhood put your center up there press it hard your scalp push back your fingers with your left hand towards me move it seven times clockwise that's all we have to do now put your left hand towards me remember we have to do everything on the left hand side you have to keep your eyes shut until i tell you please don't open your eyes because the attention draws inside with the kundalini both the feet on the mother earth parallel to each other be comfortable you are not to slouch down or you don't have to stretch yourself too much but be comfortable keep your neck straight and 
don't try to suppress your thoughts or your attention the whole thing will work out spontaneously have confidence in yourself now please put your left hand like this and right hand now on your heart and please close your eyes let's start please close your eyes Here resides the spirit. So please ask me a question, as if you are asking a computer. You can call me Shri Mata Ji or Mother, whatever suits you. Mother, am I the spirit? Ask the question. Three times, please. Mother, am I the spirit? Now, if you are the spirit, you are your master. Please take your hand. in the upper portion of your abdomen on the left hand side here you have to ask the second question because if you are the spirit you are also your master so please ask a question three times mother am i my own master ask this question three times press it hard Now, asking this question, you take down your hand on the lower part of your abdomen, on the left hand side. and here is the center of pure knowledge of the divine so now you ask for the pure knowledge because i cannot force on you so please say mother may i have the pure knowledge of the divine or mother please give me the pure knowledge of the divine please say it six times because this petal there are six petals to this center now as you ask this question the kundalini starts its movement it's rising so to release the higher chakra which we call as the guru tatva is the principle of the mastery raise your right hand on the upper part of your abdomen on the left hand side and here with full confidence you have to say 10 times mother i am my own master please say that this will also correct your spiritual problems mother i am my own master say it three times please Now the greatest truth is that you are the spirit. You are the instrument of divine love. 
You are not this body, not this mind, not this ego, nor these conditionings. You are the pure spirit. So now raise your right hand onto the heart and ask, please say twelve times with full confidence, Mother, I am the spirit. Mother, I am the Spirit. Please say it twelve times with full confidence. Now, raise your right hand to the corner between your shoulder and your neck and turn your head to your right. Here you have to say sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty. The ocean of Divine is the ocean of compassion and bliss. But above all, it is the ocean of forgiveness. And whatever mistakes you may commit, it cannot be greater than the ocean that can forgive it. So please forgive yourself and say it sixteen times, Mother, I am not guilty. Even then, if you are feeling guilty, it's better to take a punishment of saying it hundred and eight times. I have already told you that you have to be very pleasantly placed towards yourself. Now raise your hand, your forehead across and press it on both the sides. This is the center of forgiveness. So please say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Yesterday you found some people had not forgiven and we had to work it out on them, they never felt the cool breeze of the Holy Ghost and they never got their realization. So please, please, Say that, Mother, I forgive everyone, because it is a myth, whether you forgive or you don't forgive. But if you don't forgive, then you play into wrong hands. So please say from your heart, not how many times, Mother, I forgive everyone. Please say that. Now, take back your hand, put it on the back side of your head, and allow your head to rest on it, facing the sky. Here for your own satisfaction, not counting all the mistakes you have committed and all the past about which you are worried, but just for your satisfaction you may say, O oh Divine, if I have done any mistakes, please forgive me. O oh Divine, if I have done any mistakes, please forgive me. Just say that for your own satisfaction. Now, you stretch your hand and stretch back your fingers and please put the center of your palm on top of your head and press it hard sixteen seven times, seven times, bend your head and say it seven times, 
mother please give me my realization because i cannot force on you you have to ask for it so please say mother please give me my self realization seven times and slowly move it seven times Now please take down your hands. Slowly open your eyes, please. Put both the hands towards me like this. Now put the left hand, right hand towards me like this, and left hand on top of your head, on the fontanelle bone area. Bend your head and see for yourself if you are feeling the coldness. some people it feel it much higher now put your left hand towards me like this and bend your head and see for yourself with the right hand if you are feeling the cool breeze coming out of your fontanelle pool area there's so much breeze now the trees are not moving but the breeze is too much So maybe you might get confused, but be careful. Now put your right hand towards me again. Bend your head and see for yourself if there's a cool breeze coming out of your fontanelle bone area. You have to certify yourself. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. It works. without thinking beyond thinking now please put your both the hands towards the sky push back your head and ask a question ask a question mother is this the cool breeze of the holy ghost mother is this the brahma chaitanya mother is this the divine power of divine love Ask this question three times, please. Now bring down the hands, please. Those who have felt the cool breeze in their hands or on their through their fontanelle bone area, please raise both your hands. practically everyone every one of you i bow to you i bow to you because now you are the saints i bow to all the saints may god bless you may god bless you. now what is this power what have you got how to use it how to decode it how to know your own centers and the centers of other people how to maneuver it how to understand it for that you have to come to our centers don't have to pay anything nothing of the kind you come and learn all about it and become masters you can all become masters next year when i come i would like to see all the masters here let's start it in san diego for the whole of america in a big way May God bless. You. Yesterday I know so many had to wait for such a long time but if you can if you want to meet me you can come along but go fast so that you are not so much delayed.
whole atmosphere has become cool now. Please, how are you? Now better. <laughs> Just laugh. <laughs> Make Enjoy. That's all. Now, now you become the light. So you give the light. Finished. What more? You just say, Mother, let me give enlightenment. First class today, eh? It's even better. How did you sleep last night? Fine. Oh, now you'll sleep very well and you'll have no worries. I've made a hole here. All the worries will pass out. your attention please now, before you leave please, please pick up the literature that has been placed on the tables may I have your attention please before you leave please pick up the literature that is placed on the table of each gate also leave your name and address so the center San Diego Center can get you uh, back and send you the literature information about right. the public programs right. meetings and follow-up meetings uh -huh. I'm going to announce uh, now, now. That's all. Enjoy There is going to be a meeting at Cafe Del Rey Moore Balboa Park La Sala room on Sunday July 24th between 11 and 1 1 p.m. I'll announce again, there is going to be a follow-up meeting at Cape Del Rey Moro, Balboa Park. La Sala Room, Sunday, July 24th. That's tomorrow, between 11 and 1 p.m. It's going to be a follow-up meeting where you can learn more about Surge Yoga and the practices of Surge Yoga. I'm going to give you if you have uh, a paper and a pencil ready, the number of San Diego Center is 619-546-9379. All this information is available at the gate. Please don't forget to pick up the literature that gives you all the telephone numbers of the relevant centers in USA public program that is to come tomorrow between 11 and 1 at Balboa Park. 
प्लीज पिक अप द लिटरेचर ऑल्सो लीव यूर नेम एंड टेलीफोन नंबर सो सेंटर्स कैन गेट इन टच विथ यू फॉर फर्दर स्पिरिचुअल इन एन एन असेंशन प्लीज पिक अप द लिटरेचर एट प्लेस एट दीच गेट थैंक यू
You'll come back, won't you? How are you today? Enjoyed yourself? 